Uh, I don't know why this thing is acting up tonight, guys. I don't know if it's the chat GPT, but uh, hopefully we can try it again. I saw the intro was kind of moving slow. So hopefully we can try it again. Appreciate everybody for coming back. Hit that like button. Hit that like button. Do me a favor. Come back in. Hit that like button. I apologize. As soon as I got on, as y'all saw, man, the whole system just froze. So I don't know, you know, maybe these developers got something that, you know, it knows when you live stream and they don't want you showing the stuff. But we're going to try it again. And um, unfortunately, if it shuts down this time, then I'm not going to try it again. And I'm just going to call tonight a dub and uh try again Sunday with something else. So I really want to show you guys how to use this. But um, if it's not going to act right, because y'all saw everything was going fine until I was able to get in. And then as soon as I got in, man, the system just went kaput. So all right, I appreciate everybody for coming back. Make sure you guys hit that like button. Come on in, hit that like button, hit that like button. Uh, you guys don't got to let me know where you're checking in from. You guys did that already. I'm not going to make y'all do that again. All right, so we're going to get back over to this technology. I made sure I was already logged in before I came on. So I'm already in, ready to go. I just want to make sure that I don't get shut out again. So let me um, remove all this stuff real quick and try to make this quick. Um, all right, so let's try it now. Let's try it now. Share the screen. All right, so we're in. We're in, we're in, we're in. All right. So first thing we want to do is um, I want to show you guys how to create a business plan. All right, a business plan using this technology using this technology the first thing you guys need to do when you're starting your box truck business if you're starting it as far as final mile if you're starting it as far as middle mile if you're running amazon relay you need to create a business plan all right every business needs to have a business plan a mission statement all that good stuff all right guys so the first thing you want to do is let me kill this move this out the way because i want to be able to see everything all right so the first thing you want to do once you get in if you're lucky enough to get in um you're lucky enough to create a, a username and password and get granted access i should say you're going to get in when you're going to see a screen like this let me get this disclaimer real quick one more time before we we go any further um this technology and future technology is going to be made to make life simpler for you don't become um reliant on this type of technology or future technology that's going to be better than this because it's going to make you stupid and when i say that it means it, if you become so reliant on technology you're still going to be faced with real world real life situations and you you will still need to think for yourself all right so don't become reliant on artificial intelligence technology and future technology um, become too reliant on it to the point where you're not able to think for yourself when real life, real life situations occur. All right, so with that being said, this is just an A. All right, let's create a box truck business plan, all right? So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simply put in here, uh, please create me a box truck business plan all right and then i'm going to hit enter it's going to start generating here's a sample box truck business plan and it's going to write it all out for you it's going to write the plan out it's going to um outline it for you and it's going to give you a uh, verbiage text that you can utilize right um it's not plagiarism as this is for artificial intelligence but you do want to uh put the words in, in, you know, take the context out and put, fill your words in, all right? So it meets the needs of the scope of your particular um, business. 
So this is an aid for a person, let's say, who didn't go to college. Not everyone went to college and doesn't know how to create or set up or outline a business plan. Right here, it's doing all the work for you. All right. As you see, it's giving you the service offerings. It's giving you the operation. It's giving you the financial plan. It's giving you the conclusion. It's outlining the, 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 the technology is going to outline it all for you. So let's let's start up here at the top. All right. So it's giving you a sample of a box truck business plan. All right. ABC delivery service is a new box truck. All right. Blah, 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 blah. Pretty much your mission statement. Right. It's giving you a market analysis. The delivery service market is growing and there is a growing demand for reliable and efficient delivery services. The increasing trend of online shopping and home uh, home deliveries has increased the demand for delivery service. So all this information is giving you is current, right? It's current. The demand for reliable and efficient delivery service is there. There is an increasing trend of online shopping and home deliveries uh, has increased the demand of delivery service. All this is current information. Let's continue. Additionally, the growth of e-commerce. E-commerce has continued to grow and the increasing number of small businesses in the region has also contributed to the growth of the market. Most markets are growing. ABC Delivery Service aims to capture a significant share of this market by providing quality services at competitive prices. Like I was saying in the first live stream before it got shut down, you know, a lot of people ask me about sourcing funding for their business, something that I'm totally against. And I tell people, look, no bank is going to give you money until you've been in business at least two years. All right. And then even then, I still don't recommend it. But if you must go to a bank, all right, to borrow money, you're going to have to come with uh, 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 paperwork, documents, a business plan, a PL, all this information you're going to need. You're going to need to know how to set this up, outline it, and how to create this. If you've never been to school, uh, to know how to set up a business plan, then this technology is going to aid and assist you. I'm not going to read through all this, but I want to show you the outline. It's going to give you the market analysis. It's going to give you the market strategy. It's going to outline it. ABC Delivery Service will utilize various market strategies to reach our target market and generate leads. This will include online marketing and social media platforms, networking, referral offerings. It's giving you the service offerings. It's giving you the operations all the way down to conclusions. Now, let's get a little bit more technical with it. That was broad, all right? That was broad. Let's say uh, create create me a final mile box truck business plan. Let's get a little bit more specific. Let's have a little fun. Let's get a little bit more specific. Here's a sample final mile box truck business plan. XYZ Final Mile Service is a new box truck delivery business that will provide final mile delivery service to business and individuals in the local area. Our goal is to become the lead provider of final mile delivery. Our experience of team drivers and delivery professionals will ensure that each delivery is carried out in a timely professional manner, making sure that our clients' needs are met to their full satisfaction. It's going to give you that marketing analysis. It's going to give you the marketing strategy. All right. All right. So I got some things I put down here that I want to show you guys that it can also do a little bit more specific. Now, each time you input information, it may give you different information than it gave you the last time. So sometimes you may have to input information a little bit more specific and it will give you more specific inf information. As you utilize the technology, it's learning. It's learning, you know, it's learning what you search, right? It's learning the type of stuff that you, you, you put in all the time. It's learning... Uh, 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 you know, uh, the, the array of things that you are utilizing the technology for it's utilizing it. The more you utilize it, the smarter it gets. So let's take a look at this. Let's create a PL street. Um, please create me a P and L sheet. All right. A lot of people don't know. I know I spoke about a P&L sheet before. Mark, what's a P&L sheet? It's a profit and loss statement, all right? This is going to outline the profit and loss statement for you so that you know what to input. If you've never made a P&L sheet before, here is what a P&L sheet looks like, right? And then you'll be able to input this information. When you go to a bank for loan, for a traditional bank, not a hard money loan, you're not going to on debt, credibly, or cabbage. If you want to go to a bank for a loan, they're going to ask you for a PL, all right? And this is how you outline it, all right? It's going to give you all this, and you're going to insert your own information, period. You're going to insert the period. 
revenue. You're going to insert your sales, other income. You're going to in input all this information. It's giving you the outline. The technology is doing a lot of the thinking and a lot of the work for you. All right. Um, let's say you want to know goals. You want to create some goals for your box truck business, but you don't know what goals to create because you've never created a box truck business. You never built out this type of business. So outside of money, you need to know what goals. All right. So let's say, um, uh, uh, what are some goals for my box truck business? All right. It's going to give you a brief description of what goals and what you should be looking for. I right? obviously financial, and it's going to give you an outline of the financial achieve a certain level of revenue. All right. And then you can utilize this information and then you can put a timetable on it. All right. Uh, financial achieve a certain level of money by a certain time period. Right. All the way down employee satisfaction, environmental responsibility, uh, community involvement, environmental responsibility. You can also input that into your mission statement. Let's scroll back up to the top. So these are the things you should be looking for ultimately to help you know, create you a successful box truck business where you're running a final mile, middle mile, whatever. All right. Financial. Obviously, you want to make money growth. It's something that I did a video on. I did a live stream on it. And I'm also I also have a free course on my website, www.boxtruckbusinesscourses.com, where I'm giving you a free online course of the five stages of growth. So if you haven't went to my website and downloaded that free course, go ahead and download that free course on the five stages of growth customer satisfaction all right all right it's going to give you the breakdown increasing customer satisfaction the customers are going to be uh your clients if you're running final mile then your clients are going to be the third part logistics company if you're running amazon your client is going to be amazon right all right if you're running middle mile your client is going to be the shippers right and ultimately the end customer that you're delivering to you may have multitude of clients if you're running final mile also i mean middle mile also if you're running final mile your direct customer is going to be your direct client whether i should say is going to be the third party logistics company and then you're going to also go face to face with the consumer that purchased so that's going to be the consumer which is also going to be a form of client but your direct client is going to be the third party logistics company and then ultimately customer satisfaction you want to make sure that the customer is satisfied whereas the consumer that's buying and also the retailer which is the customer to the third party logistics company and then your direct customer your direct client which is the third party logistics company um employee satisfaction obviously you know you got to satisfy your employees but here's a great outline of some things that you know you can do attract and retain high quality employees right uh, provide training and developmental opportunities, offer competitive salaries and benefits, create a positive work environment. All right. Your environmental responsibility. That's something else that, you know, I think uh, gets away from a lot of people when they're building a business. I say, you know, incorporate to make a good mission statement. You probably want to incorporate um, environmental satisfaction or environmental responsibilities into your mission statement some sort of way. Reduce the carbon footprint of the business. This is something that you really can utilize. You can really utilize this information. Reducing the carbon footprint is something that most, if you if you look at like the mission statement, you look at business plans for a lot of um, uh, a, a, a lot of businesses now. One of their main objectives for most big business is reducing the carbon footprint. Everybody is go green energy 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 right saving you know going green and all that you want to utilize that as well implement sustainable practices and operations support local and national initiatives to protect the environment you know every big company if you notice they're big on the environment you want to implement that into your uh your, your goals um i say put some type of environmental into your mission statement um as well community involvement you know and this is for a business if you're planning you know on scaling and reaching a certain level of success you got to be involved with the community so it's giving you all the right information all right let's let's continue to go on that was goals let's say marketing strategy let's have it write us a marketing strategy uh please create me a marketing strategy for my box truck business all right, let's put it in there on oh, error curve. This issue persists. All right, so usually when this happens, I just refresh it. 
and just refresh it. All right, let's try it again. We're experiencing exceptionally high demand. Please hang tight as we work. So let me hurry up and try to get through this, guys, before it boots me out and doing all this stuff again. All right, please create me a marketing strategy for my box truck business. All right, I'm going to hit this button. I'm not going to hit enter. Sure, here's a marketing strategy you can use to promote your box truck business. Develop a strong brand identity, create a unique and recognizable logo, tagline, overall image for your business that sets it apart. All right, utilize social media, optimize the website. All right, so it's going to create that marketing strategy for you. All right, um, it's going to give you the outline of things that you need to do, and then you can, you know, start plugging away at these things. All right network with local businesses and you know some of these things may not you know pertain to you if you're dealing directly you're doing contract stuff uh but you get the point i'm gonna move along to something a little bit more important guys before this thing shuts down because it's saying it's 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 busy let's say please create and these are things that you guys need to to create for your business especially you guys that are looking to get into the business whether it's a box truck business where it's a cargo van business so I'm going to put, please create me a cost analysis analysis for my box truck business. All right, let's hit the enter button there. All right. All right, so it's going to give you the whole breakdown of the cost analysis. All right, your startup cost, guys. Very important. These are the one-time costs incurred when starting the business, including the cost of the box truck, box, box trucks, insurance, licenses, permits, and any legal accounting fees. Your operating expenses, right? Your marketing and advertising costs, um, if that's something that you need to do. Equipment and supplies, uh, rent or lease costs, right? Which would be, and most of you guys aren't going to have warehouse or anything, so that would like equate to like your parking if needed. Uh, miscellaneous expenses would be your variable cost, and then it's going to give you an example cost analysis, right? Box truck fifty thousand, insurance five thousand, licenses and permits, legal and accounting fees, total startup costs, right? Operating expenses, marketing and advertising. It's breaking it down, all right? It's breaking it down, and you got you guys are you know you can utilize these templates, you know, for your business. A lot of people. Like over the past year, 2020, 2021, if this was around, it would have curved some of that margin of error that a lot of people went through with fake gurus and, you know, um, um, you know, buying into people that they thought had their best interests, um, uh, uh, buying those expensive mentorships, buying those expensive courses like this kills all of that. Because you're still going to have to do your work. It's going to give you a template and outline. And it's also going to tell you what you need to do to start building your business. Now, I'm not saying that a, a good mentor. Yeah, you're going to some people are going to need someone that has been through it. That's tenured to kind of walk them through it. The AI isn't going to give you real life situation. It's smart, but it's not that smart. It's not going to tell you what Mark tells you. Like, look, OK, this is how you do final minds. This is how you get into it. But guess what? You're going to make this type of money, but guess what? Claims, you know, the, 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 um, the percentage of claims is, you know, it's there. It's a high risk of getting the claims. You know, it's a risky business because there's a lot of liability. I should say at stake. You got the liability of the merchandise and you got the liability because you're going into multiple people's homes throughout the day. This technology isn't going to give you those real life scenarios or warn you on those types of real life scenarios. So it's not that smart to to that you know point yet all right so you know but for the basic stuff that most people were spending thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on you can get it right here if you're lucky enough to 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 get into this right now and even when you get in if you're lucky enough during that time of day where you can get in and input this information to get information out of it it's going to kill a lot of that margin of error that a lot of people went through, right? And it's going to kill that need for, uh, 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 well, some need, I should say. It's not going to kill it all for like mentorship and things of that nature. A lot of the basic stuff 
you will be able to utilize on your own. The only reason your only reason you should have to go to a person for mentorship or consultation is really for strategy. All right. Strategy that is beyond the scope of the technology. All right. At this point. And I have you guys best interest. I'm telling you this information. I'm telling you to go and and seek this information. And if you haven't gotten in to use this technology, keep trying to you get in to at least get your email in and register because it does keep your IP. So it knows if you're in there and worst case scenario, the servers are busy and it'll make you wait, but make sure when it's open back up for registration, you register and you get in there to utilize this technology because they kept upgrading they keep upgrading and they keep upgrading. It keeps getting smarter and smarter and smarter. All right, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's, let's create a mission statement now for a cargo van business. Let's step away from box truck. Let's say, please, create me a mission statement for a cargo van business all right let's create a mission statement for a cargo van business all right boom here's a sample mission statement for a cargo van business our mission is to provide reliable and efficient delivery service for businesses and individuals we are committed to delivering cargo with care and ensuring that every shipment arrives at its destination on time and in good condition. Our goal is to build strong relationships with our customers and to be go-to choice for their delivery needs with, with our experience and knowledge, knowledgeable team, state-of-the-art vehicles, and commitment to customer satisfaction. We strive to be a leader in the cargo van industry. See how great of a, a mission statement that is? You don't have to think and put words together and make it sound cool and figure it out. It's going to give it to you, all right? It's going to give you the information, all right? I like that one. I'm going to give that one a thumbs up. I don't want to submit any feedback. All right. Thumbs up, though. All right. So let's move on. Let's move on. Uh, let's do a case study. Please. Let's just say create. Make me a case study for uh, a box truck business. All right. Let's see what it does here. All right, here's a sample case study for a box truck business. And then it's going to outline a case study. All right. And it's just going to outline it for you. You can utilize some of the verbiage. You can change some of the verbiage into uh, your own words to meet the needs of the goals of your particular box truck or cargo van business. All right. There's people out there that charge people to do this. All right. So like things like this that I'm telling you, like the business plan, the market analysis, the cost analysis, your case study, your mission statement, all that, man. If you want a grant, look, check this out. Let's see if this works. Please write me a grant proposal for a future box truck business say you want to write a grant you need a grant written because you want to source some funding you don't have the money to start your business so you want to try to get like a government grant here's a sample grant for a future box truck business it's going to write the grant for you it's going to write the grant proposal listen there's people that write grant proposals for a living this technology is doing it for you you don't have to pay and it's free technology you're just going to basically take out abc box truck services and input your own information. It's going to write it all. It's going to write it for you. The introduction, the objective, the business plan, right? The market analysis. All right. You see where it puts the delivery service market in and then city state. You're going to fill in your city state. Your budget. You're going to put this information in. You're going to change that 100,000 to 50,000. All right. Your license permit. You're operating. All right. You're going to input all this information uh as it meets the needs of the particular business that you're trying to start. All right. Uh, and it's going to all go all the way down to the conclusion. So it's going to write you a proposal. All right. You know, if you want to write, you know, you want to get some type of government funding or, you know, one of these companies that gives grants out and you need to write a grant proposal, you don't have to go to a proposal writer anymore. You can go to chat GPT and let the artificial intelligence write the proposal for you. All right. So there's a lot of, uh, uh, good that comes from this technology but also this technology can make you very lazy and it can make you stupid 
if you become reliant on this technology. So use it as an aid. There's other things that I can show you um, that this technology does, but I don't want to show it to you guys uh, at this point because I don't want you guys to um, misuse uh, the technology, so to speak, and uh, ultimately become lazy. So I'm not going to show you guys a lot more of what this this can do. I just wanted you know you guys to see this for yourself because I know I've been talking about it as of lately, and now you got a chance to see how uh, this technology uh, really works. And ultimately, that's it. You know, um, I'll, I'll open it up for questions now. Like I said, sorry that the first live got the you know you know you know the computer froze or whatever, but or the live froze or whatever happened. But it is what it is. So. I'm glad I able I got a chance to show you guys this. Your favorite influencer guru would never give you this much consistent sauce for free, especially not in their life. Yeah, so you know a lot of people may hate me for this because you know, you know this ultimately kills um, a person's stream of revenue. You know this technology, not just in this space and in a lot of spaces. You know, and then what's I'm gonna tell you what's gonna eventually happen or what's probably already happened. There's probably people utilizing this technology to sell services like proposal writing hey let me write i'm a proposal writer let me write your proposal you tell me oh well, i need a grant proposal written for a box truck business and this person is acting like they're this well-renowned proposal writer but really they're going to chat gpt and you can regenerate you can hit the regenerate button so like that example that it gave me you can hit regenerate and then it'll switch it up for you each time you know what i'm saying so it's not going to necessarily give you the same verbiage, right? Um, in context, the same way each time you can hit regenerate it and it, it, it'll switch it up uh, for you. And, you know, you know, me being an honest, fair person, I want people to, you know, know about this stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I'm not here to, you know, keep people in the dark. I'm here to bring the light to the people. You know what I'm saying? So my blessings come in many shapes, forms and fashions i don't need to um keep information from people i want you guys to know the technology is out there and ultimately utilize the technology to make life easier uh for you just don't misuse it don't abuse it and don't become reliant on it because it will make you stupid all right it will make you stupid um all right so let me go back i'm gonna do questions and answers real quick and then I'm going to get out of here. I'm sorry. Once again, the earlier live did what it did, but it is what it is. And I'm sorry for keep apologizing, but I, I hate it that it did that. It sucks. Uh, when Mark, the mentor dot ETH, you know, I don't, I don't plan on doing a particular coin for myself, but you know, maybe when we get back in the bull cycle of stock and crypto, I'll tell you guys some of the plays that I'm making. Um, obviously, I'm going to do a disclaimer, so don't necessarily follow me, you know. But I will let you know the plays that I'm making. Um, I'm not going to give any recommendations, but I'll, I'll definitely let you know what I'm investing in. Like I said last week, I'm investing into a lot of AI, heavy in the fetch AI, heavy in the gala. Um, I got my, you know, uh, my coins that, you know, don't really have much utility, um, um, still heavy in the Cardano, um, heavy in the V chain, even though I may pull out a V chain, um, I'm still riding with, uh, XRP, you know, I believe, uh, XRP is going to have its day. I'm still waiting on my, um, flare tokens. I still never got my flare tokens. Um, as far as stock, AI, I'm reinvesting back into EV technology. I'm investing even more into um, um, uh, charging uh, charging technology. I'm, I'm buying back into uh, Blink and um, Plug Power and ChargePoint and all those companies. Um, but really, AI, I think AI is going to go through a, a, a bubble a bubble period, right? A bubble phase like all new technology does, right? Think back to the dot-com bubble. Anytime there's new technology, it's going to go through its bubble phase. EV had its bubble phase in, in 20, right? EV stocks were high, right? A lot of these EV stocks were overvalued than what they were really worth, right? 
but it went through its bubble phase and ultimately the bubble phase popped. Every technology, new technology goes through a bubble phase. AI will go through its bubble phase. I think we're on the, 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 the cusp, the brink of it, the starting of it now. So you want to be an early adopter, buy in. It's going to run up really high. And then you want to ultimately exit your positions when you feel it's comfortable. You'll never be able to call the top. And then it's going to come crashing down. But the people who are the early adopters who buy in very, very low, and when that that hype starts to get, think about, for you guys that don't know what I'm talking about, think about your Dogecoin and think about Shiba Inu. When Shiba Inu got popular because of social media and then the news came, you got to remember, it was guys that bought in at 0.0000001. And that was one, I was one of those guys. I made a lot of money off Shiba. I made a lot of money off Dogecoin. I actually, I actually, I actually made a lot less than what I could have made because I got out and got back in. And if I would have just held on and just held on, I damn near would have made damn near close to MM. I had over a million Doge coins at one point that I bought at like 0 0.00019. So I was buying Doge coin back in 18, you know, so I, I'm still beating myself up about getting out before it ran up you know, to 72 cents. But, um, you know, that's basically what an early adopter is, getting into something very, very early. And once it goes through its bubble phase, you want to exit out because as it's rising up and it's bubbling, it's bubbling. Now you got all the, what we call bandwagon people buying into the hype, right? And as they buy into the hype, that continues to run this stuff up even more. But smart people have already been in. So as the bandwagon people are getting in because they're buying into the hype, you know, you're exiting out. And then guess what? It tanks. And guess what? All those bandwagon people that are buying in late because they weren't early adopters because they're late to the party because they're not researching and, and knowing how to invest their money. They get caught what? Left holding the bag because guys like me have already been in and we're pulling out. Yeah, we're hyping it up with them. Yeah, get this, get this, get this. Sending them off like goofies, right? And while I'm sending them off, telling them to buy in, I'm taking my money out. And that's how you play the game. That's how you play the game. But no, I probably won't do a, a coin for me. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, I can't say I might do an NFT, but maybe not a coin. But you never know what the future holds. Uh, your favorite influencer guru would never. Yeah, I think I answered that. Yeah, a lot of people ain't going to give you the sauce. What technology is this, Mark? This is ChatGPT. ChatGPT. Make sure you get in if you can get in. Uh, you thought about using it to make money? You can use it to make money. Hey, Mark, how can I get started in touch with you if I don't have social media? I actually started using this AI chat yesterday to help me start my box truck business. Good. Congratulations for utilizing it um, to help, you know, set up and walk you through and outline, you know, your, your business plan and all that. Um, if you don't have uh, social media, you can just go to my website, uh, www.boxtruckcourses.com, or you can email me at mark at thementormark.com. That's mark at TheMentorMark.com. All right. After making a request, can you print it straight from chat GPT or just copy and paste? Copy and paste. Copy and paste. Not for real. That's real. You're genuine for real, bro. Rocking with you 100%. Trey Hicks, I appreciate you, man. Thank you for coming in live. Oh, you saying ETH uh, as far as a domain? I, I got my domain, but I don't have a .eth domain. I got a .com. I didn't know you could. Well, you know, I did see a .eth domain, but that's pretty much for if you are running like some type of uh, like some type of Ethereum, Ethereum program, right? Or well, I could be wrong. I'm not sure. Put me on. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Send crypto to it. Oh, so like a crypto uh, a domain wallet. You know, that's a good idea. I may have, um, I may have, um, I may have someone looking to maybe possibly billing me that. That's a good idea. Appreciate it. It's a good idea. Uh, I didn't get any tokens. Did anyone did did anyone get them? I didn't get any tokens either. Either. What tokens are you talking about, Pippi? All right, guys, hit that like button. Hit that like button, guys. Um, any questions? Any questions? I hope you guys get a chance to you utilize that technology. Um. Hit that like button. Any questions, guys? Any questions on tonight?
Oh yeah, I didn't get the flare tokens either. You know what? My homie got his flare tokens um because he he uh he had transferred before uh Coinbase uh suspended XRP from Coinbase. Um he had transferred all his his XRP over to Uphold. And Uphold released them. They released Songbird and they released Flare. I kept mine on the exchange. And ultimately, uh, Coinbase had the option to either distribute or hold on to them for themselves. They don't. They didn't necessarily have to distribute them. So they haven't said anything. A lot of people have been tweeting them and trying to get a response from them. They haven't responded. So I think at this point, we're never going to see that those Flare tokens. And, you know, that's free money that, you know... I was expecting. I wasn't banking on them. I wasn't banking on it, but I definitely was expecting it. So it sucks. Mark, how many various AI companies are out there? There's, there's plenty of AI companies. I don't, when I say plenty, I'm not saying like hundreds or thousands, but there's quite a few of them. Um, but um, OpenAI right now. Um, it seems to me they may be the number one um, uh, AI company as far as techs. Um, they're actually doing something with Bing, Bing, which is Bing, which is Microsoft's um, search engine, which Bing actually really sucks, really, really bad. Um, they're, I think, next month they're incorporating um, Chat GPT into their search engine. Um, so Google is a little bit nervous right now. Um, so, you know, just by Microsoft doing that, it, it, it stamps chat GPT, um, as pretty much the number one. Um, and it gives them that validation, um, as well, which is ultimately making Google very nervous. Um, as far as flair, uh, I'm, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, if, if, was your XRP on Coinbase? Was it on the, the Coinbase exchange? If it's on Coinbase, or if it was on Coinbase, um, when it did the um, snapshot, um, more than likely, since everyone else has gotten theirs, um, more than likely, Coinbase isn't going to give us our flare tokens. So, you know, I've kind of written it off. If I log into my, my wallet on Coinbase one day and it's there, then, you know, that'll be a good day. But, you know, ultimately, I'm no longer expecting it or looking for it. Um, I'm glad you're making content on the tech to help with business. Yeah, man. So I think um, I think it's important, man. You know, I'm I'm always, you know, you know, you know, my content always is different from everyone else's. I, you know, I'm always an outside the box stinker. Um, I don't like to make content that is, you know, what everybody else makes the same old stuff. I, I try to, at least my subscriber base, I want you guys to be forward thinking. I want you guys to think into the future. You know, uh, I don't want you guys to be hung up on one thing. Yeah. Get in the box truck business, get in the cargo van business, but also create a plan. Nothing lasts forever. You know what I'm saying? Nothing lasts forever. The industry is going to continue to shift. I know at the beginning of the last live for who the people that weren't in there i talked about qc you know p and um um coach k selling their business yesterday or the day before whenever for 300 million a lot of people are giving them flax in they're so they're so, they sold out but that was a gr good business move look at the the trend of what's going on in the music industry everyone is selling their masters dr dre just sold his 200 million justin bieber just sold his 200 million future 80 million uh, Little Wayne, a hundred million, and the list goes on. And this is happening suddenly, and this is something that artists would kill, die, and fight, and complain that they're getting ripped off. Years prior, just five, ten years ago, artists was crying about, "Man, give me my masters, Puffy, give me my masters, give me my masters." People would kill for their masters. Now everybody's selling their masters. So what does that tell me? And it's top tier artists. There's something that I don't know about because I'm not in the music industry, right? But there's something on the brink that's about to happen that these artists are looking to take their money because apparently they're not going to see um, uh, 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 the residual um, benefits from it over a period of time like artists in the past that were lucky enough to own their masters 
or label heads that own artist masters would see. That's why they're taking a lump sum money now and getting out. Something's on the brink. I don't know what it is, but for all these artists to be selling their masters and then for them to sell their label, something is about to happen. All right. Even the music industry is transitioning and it has went through a transition, right? Streaming. Now these guys are getting paid 0.001 cent per stream. You got to do billions of streams just to, what, a billion streams to make a million dollars or something, whatever the, 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 uh, whatever, whatever it is. I don't know. I'm not in the music, industry, but it's not a penny. You got to do like 0 0.001 per, like you get for every stream is like 0 0.001. So you got to do a lot of streams to make money. All right. So something's going on, you know, I don't know what it is, but I just wanted to use that as a parallel to the box truck business, getting the business recognize your run when you're having it and then you know this may not be a business that you can sell but assets are going up you know you may be able to sell off your assets for a profit and then exit and take that money and then transition don't get left holding the bag right don't get left holding the bag when your money is coming in invest into other things don't do goofball stuff with your money so that if like the industry does transition and then like, damn, you're not making the money that you once were, but you know, a bunch of bread came through your fingertips, right? And you didn't utilize that money and reinvest that money into other things when you had the chance. Now you don't have it to reinvest and the business is not doing well because the landscape of the industry has shifted. All right. You want to see when you're having your run and you want to take that money and invest into other opportunities. It could be anything. It could be real estate. It could be stocks. It could be crypto. It could be NFTs. It could be whatever. You know what I'm saying? Just, you know, invest that money when it's coming in, hand over fist into other things. All right. Uh, know what's going on. Be on the, um, you know, be abreast of what's coming up in the future. Don't just buy into things because it's popular. That when you, when it's popular, it's too late. You want to be early to the party. You want to be early to the party. Let the suckers let, get left hold of the bag because they suckers. I was once a sucker, all right? I don't. I know not to how to be a sucker, and that's why I'm teaching y'all be a sucker. Look, AI is going to be the next bubble, all right? And technology. So all your AI stocks, all your AI crypto are going to go through a bubble phase. And when it gets popular, you see it on the news how all these AI companies are just uh, are, are 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 valued at these high dollar amounts, which is going to be overvalued. And everybody that doesn't know about stock or everybody that doesn't know about crypto start running the Robin Hood, start running the Coinbase like they did with the Shiba Inu, buying in, buying in, buying in, right? Doing the phase, which is the bubble phase, right? Doing the hype, thinking they're gonna make a bunch of money. Guys like me. That's been in, been sitting in for a couple years waiting because we bought in early. We pulling out. We telling them, to, yeah, buy in. Buy in. They buy in. I'm ten, pulling out 10%. Oh, yeah, buy in. The news. Yeah, your Shiba Inu. Yeah, I just bought me some. The whole time I'm lying. I'm pulling out another 10% the next day. I'm going to exit 80 to 90%. Let them buy in. And I'm taking out. And guess what? When the big whales start pulling their money out, it's going to go down. And guess what? They're going to get left holding the bag because they bought in too high. That's how you play the game in any business. You want to be an early adopter. Get in early. This box truck thing I've been in since 2010. I was in early. It was the wild, wild west. I was naming my prices back then. It's not the wild, wild mess anymore, right? These third-party logistics companies, they understand it. They really were learning the industry when I was getting in back then. I talked... To three, um, I talked to the vice couple vice pre. I talked to two vice presidents of one company earlier this week. I talked to some corporate people from another logistics company earlier this week, and I talked to some corporate. Pe I ain't gonna tell you the companies, but I will tell you this company. I talked to a couple, some corporate people at RxO. These companies are hitting me up to consult them. The game is changing. You know what I'm saying? So you want to be you want to be an early adopter. I was in early on the box truck thing. You know, it wasn't popular when I got in. It's popular now. So I was able to suck a lot out of it. A lot of the things, a lot of the money that I was able to get, you know, back then for doing minimal work. You know, it's guys that's running accounts now. I had trucks doing one stop that was ma was making what a, 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 a truck would have to go do 10 to 11 stops and make in today's times. 
Why? Because back then the companies were trying to hold on to these accounts and they hadn't figured it out yet. You know, so early adoption is very important, guys. It's very important. Uh, I use the AI chat to try and make sense of my insurance and enterprise rental quotes. LR, I'm one week away from going active. Can AI help me learn how to get good loads? Um, I don't think the technology is that personable where it's going to help you make personal, like those types of decisions. That's why I say don't become too reliant. That's one of those real life situations that I'm talking about, right? That you're going to have to know how, you know, how and what type of loads uh, to pick, you know, for your business. That technology is not going to be able to help you with that at this current moment. Uh, top three load boards for box truck. I'll give you two, DAT. Um, and when you do DAT, you want to go with the most expensive subscription um, and select this, which is another um, uh, load board, which is very expensive, but you're going to get the best bang out of your buck. So with the money that you're paying on subscriptions, you'll be able to dispatch yourself and still save money uh, over hiring a dispatcher and giving them 10% off every load. So uh, DAT um, and select this, and then when you use those two, make sure uh, you 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 um, get the the higher end subscription. Uh, Google just came out with theirs yesterday. I heard was it called Brad or something like that? But yeah, I heard about it. I didn't get a chance to really look into it or read under the none of the articles, but one of my homies did mention it to me yesterday. All right, so Pippi, if you got Coinbase, then I don't. My my thoughts are we're not gonna see it. I don't think we're gonna see our flare tokens. I think uh, Coinbase decided to keep them. They had that option to keep them too, uh, from Flare that they can keep them if they wanted. They didn't necessarily have to distribute them. I think it would have been in their best interest to distribute those tokens to the people that kept their XRP on Coinbase uh, for that snapshot, but. The agreement that they had with Flair was they had three options, give it out, keep it, and there was another option I forget. But ultimately, at this point, I think they're going to keep it because all the other exchanges have distributed um, the Flair tokens. So I, I'm not banking on it. You know, I've, I've, that's not even a thought in my head. Like I said, if I log into Coinbase one day and they're there, then a blessing, you know what I'm saying? But it's not something that I'm, hoping and praying and wish for i've kind of already written it off and like i said if i log in one day and see it, it'll be a blessing but for for the most part i've already written it off as a it's not really even a loss because it's free money you know what i'm saying but just written it off is i don't think they're going to give it to us is a thousand good for warehouse to person cargo insurance is one thousand dollars good for warehouse to person cargo insurance for warehouse to person cargo insurance can you rephrase that if your accent is 1000 good for cargo insurance for a cargo van i think that's kind of on the higher end you know what i'm saying i don't know where the warehouse is coming in to person so can you rephrase that for me uh i tried to use ai chat to calculate my cost per mile and what happened when you did that Sounds like a rug pull Ponzi with Flair. No, nah, it's not a rug pull Ponzi because Uphold and all the other um, exchanges and wallets have distributed the uh, Flair. Coinbase is like the only one, if not the only one, that hasn't distributed. So it's not a Ponzi. You know, they distributed. You know, twenty five. the first 25% went out a couple months. December 9th? Was it December 9th or January 9th? All right. Um, just Coinbase hasn't, so it's not a Ponzi. They definitely went out on the other exchanges. It's just Coinbase is, I guess, opted not to distribute. So it is what it is. Uh, do you think the box truck industry will be more profitable when trucks can self-drive themselves, similar to Uber not being profitable since cars can't drive? I think definitely. I think it's going to be more profitable for the um the companies. Uh, companies will definitely make make more money. So 
the initial investment into the technology of the self-driving vehicle obviously is going to cost a lot of money but over time the money that they're saving uh from labor is is, is going to value them greater saving that money than investing into the actual autonomous fully autonomous vehicle so yes ultimately they're cutting their overhead tremendously so yes uh the companies are going to make a lot more money uber is working on they're working with one of the um autonomous companies i don't know which one they're looking to create a fully autonomous uber i know waymo is already out there in california which is fully autonomous it's doing fully autonomous rides in california i know tesla is working on creating a well they well they already well they already have the technology but they're building out a ride sharing platform of their own vehicle so they're going to enter the ride sharing market uh i believe soon with teslas and their own ride sh sharing platform that's going to be uh fully autonomous and of course so that all that money that they're making off those rides ultimately they're keeping because there's no you know it's not you know they're not contracting it out so that's all company money so each ride they're making 100 percent of that that revenue and they're keeping it you know what i'm saying so yeah yeah i think um ultimately uh uh it's going to be more profitable for the companies it's just going to put people out of work you know and that that's another thing you know I, I know a lot of people you know i have a lot of detractors in the words of kevin samuels well i won't say a lot there's a few detractors i see here and there that just don't believe in technology they don't think they think things are going to be the same way forever and they're not technology is moving at a far more rapid pace than it was moving in the 80s and the 90s you know as technology advances you know it speeds up it gets better it gets smarter and it, it, it gets faster all right so um don't be caught up with thinking things are going to be the same there's a lot of companies of the past that thought things were going to last forever and we could we no matter how old you are that's watching just think back of some companies that were around when you were a kid growing up that are no longer here. Or we can go to retail stores all the way to Blockbuster movies. You know what I'm saying? Blockbusters out of here. Redbox out of here. You know, eventually, believe it or not, 20 years from now, Netflix will probably, 30 years from Netflix will probably be out of here too. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know what the technology that will come that will replace it but i'm sure there's some type of technology if you would have asked me 30 years ago about some of the technology that we have now i wouldn't have believed it because i was once one of those people that didn't believe you tell people about the amazon thing and they say well man amazon won't be able to afford the maintenance that's the like that's some of the most stupidest shit i ever heard in my life amazon not affording the maintenance do you think they really care about the maintenance when they're going to be saving millions of dollars in labor like, like some of the stuff people say is just, you know, it behooves me. It just doesn't make sense. And that's how I, 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 I determine if a person is a real business person or not when they make silly and stupid comments like Amazon won't won't want to pay the maintenance on their own truck. It's stupid. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, don't be caught up in and in, and in, and in, and in, and in, and in, in, in getting left behind. And like we say. And, and invest in get left holding the bag because a lot of people are gonna get left holding the bag in the future. So yeah, the companies are gonna be way more profitable than they are now once they remove the human element and are making a hundred percent of the revenue. Uh, any good box truck loan or leasing companies? Box truck loan. Uh, as far as financing, I'm not sure, man. You know, I can't say I've worked with anybody. All my used box trucks, I bought them from the dealer cash, you know, bought them outright. Um, and then, like I said, the one new box truck I bought, I bought one new and one cargo van, and I bought those from a dealer. So when I bought those two vehicles, one was financed through Wells Fargo and one was financed through Ally. All my other trucks were, I wrote a check, bought them outright. So I haven't had too much experience over the years of financing trucks, so. I can't really help you and I don't want to recommend anyone to you for financing like something serious like money that I haven't dealt with, you know, uh, myself. Uh, 
yeah, go ahead and hit that like button for me, guys. We're getting some type of value from this live stream, from answering your questions. You're getting some type of value. Do me a favor and hit the like button for me. Appreciate it. Uh, let me know if you want to drop a NFT collection. I made two so far, one on Solana and one on Ethereum. Um, I was actually talking to someone the other day about um, potentially minting one. Um, I just don't have an idea of what I want to do at this point. I'm kind of thinking of some ideas, but I'm working on two or two, well, two other projects right now, and it's kind of taking up a lot of my research um, time, my R and D time, I should say. But uh, creating an NFT is something I do want to do. I do got some cool ideas. I just don't have the time. But yeah, um, shoot me an email. Um, and let me know that you do that. So when it is time, I can double back and maybe we can work on something. Shoot me an email at uh, mark at the mentor mark dot com. Mark at the mentor mark dot com. Uh, speaking of early adopters, completely different arena. What do you think about boxable manufactured homes? I think they are trying to disrupt the housing market. Are those the houses? Um, Boxable manufactured homes. Hold on, before I say what I think it is, let me look it up to make sure. Boxable houses. Let me look, make sure. Is Rihanna Rihanna's doing the halftime show at the Super Bowl? Oh, and while I'm looking this up, Sunday's live. Um, um, it's going to be earlier. I'm not going to compete with the Super Bowl. So I'm not coming on Sunday at 8 o'clock. I'll probably come on early. Well, I will come on early in the day. I'm just not going to X Sunday out. I'll be on probably sometime around 12 or 1 or 2. Sometime between 12 and 2. Um, and then I'll do a two-hour show and and I'll be out of here. I'm not going to compete with the Super Bowl. And I'm not going to leave people hanging. So I'll just come on earlier that day. If you can't come in earlier, I don't care if it's one person here. I just talk to myself. And then when you guys want to catch the replay, you can catch it. So um, I, I'm coming on early Sunday because I won't. I'm not going to be watching the Super Bowl. I really don't care, but I'm not going to compete with it. That's the most watched show in TV. So uh, let me see. Boxable Home. Let me see what this is. Okay, so yeah, I have I have seen this before. Um what do I think about this? Um Um ask me the question what do I think about it from an investor standpoint or a buyer standpoint to live in? Now, as a buyer, I wouldn't buy this home. I'm in Chicago. I, this thing ain't insulated. I, I was well, probably insulated, but this is not something that I would feel comfortable living in. You know, I, I think I'd be very cold in the winter, very hot in the summer. And when we have tornadoes in the summer, this thing will blow me away. Um, so me, I'm not sold on something like this. You know, I need brick. I need brick. I don't even buy frame houses brick you know what i'm saying um now as far as an investor standpoint um i know that this new generation they're very tech savvy and tech 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 and i see them buying these types of things and investing into these things so now this is something i may invest in i may invest in a company that maybe is public um as far as investing into the build out and the actual hard asset of it, nah, I wouldn't invest into the actual box itself, but I bet I invest into the company. I play it smart and 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 try to make a coin or two that way. Um Yeah, so hopefully that answers your question from both angles from an investment standpoint and from like a consumer buyer to live in standpoint um yeah i wouldn't live in that 
even the money trucks are using cargo vans now. You are talking about the um like the Brinks trucks? Yeah, they're using cargo vans. They're doing custom build outs or they're buying them uh built out or having a manufacturer build them out or customize them straight from the manufacturer, You're right? Um and you know what? That's a good question and I have to give credit to Kirk on that one. Um from what Kirk says, he says the higher subscription on DAT, you get more load. So um, that thirty nine ninety nine, basically that's just the leftover scraps. He says there's more partials that are available for the hundred and thirty nine ninety nine subscription that the thirty nine ninety nine subscription doesn't see. All right, so you know that's why you know um, if it opens you up to more opportunities uh to make money for better loads then spend the extra hundred bucks because you're ultimately still going to save uh versus hiring a dispatcher and paying them 10 percent. so it makes sense to just pay the 139.99 if it's going to open you up to more opportunities and more loads so credit to kirk on that one because uh um you know, I thought the thirty nine ninety nine was fine, you know, but once he explained it to me and I see him explaining it to other people, then, you know, I say go with that one. That hundred dollars ain't going to really make you or break you if, you know, if, if, it, if it's a decision versus seeing 10 loads versus seeing 100 loads, then that hundred dollars is going to pay for itself. One thousand dollar cargo insurance and a 16 foot box truck. One thousand dollar cargo. Okay, so do you mean so you're paying one thousand dollars just for the cargo insurance for a sixteen foot box truck? Are you saying a hundred thousand dollars in cargo insurance for a sixteen foot box truck? You have your authority, then yeah, you're gonna need a hundred thousand uh, dollars policy for you know that truck. Now, if you're paying a thousand dollars just for the cargo insurance, then yeah, you're paying too much, especially for a 16 foot box truck. A lot too much. Way too much. If you got one 16 foot box truck, that's what you should be paying pretty much or even less, depending on the year um, and how old you are and your driving record. You actually could be paying less than that for all three combined. So if you're paying a thousand dollars just for your cargo insurance, then um, you're getting ripped off. So the answer uh, to that is no, 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 no. Uh, for cost per mile, AI broke it down to divide the operational cost by the miles driven. That's correct. Save on labor and no hours of service, so they drive with minimal downtime. You're talking about um for the fully autonomous, right? Um, trucks. Do you think AI chat can help us finesse the box truck game as newcomers joining late? No, I think what it'll do for you newcomers is uh help prevent you from getting finessed from fake gurus. That's what I was saying earlier. So it's going to help you prevent getting finesse. You know, a lot of the stuff that a lot of people were paying other people to do, you can actually do it yourself. It'll give you the outline and the blueprint, and then you can just adjust it as you see fit. You know what I'm saying? I think you should only go to consultation, coaching, really just for strategy. If you find a person that's tenured in a certain area and when i say tenured i really mean tenured all right um uh for strategy in real life scenario situations but basic stuff that people were paying these courses and stuff for and like no chat gpt um ai technology will provide you all that information just type in what you need it to give you and it'll spit it back out at you so, no, I don't think it, it will help you finesse the, the, the box drug industry, but I, I think ultimately it, it's going to help you from getting finessed. 
Mark Tesla Power Space is about to blow with the advent of those mega packs. You know, I heard about the mega packs. I haven't done any reading up on them, so I need to put that also on my to do list for this weekend. I need to um, read up on the Google's AI, and I need to also read up on that 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 um, those mega packs. Uh, I think as far as there are pedestrians on the street, self-driven cars won't be viable. Drivers have the ability to be aware of certain safety hazards through communication of eyesight enhancing. And that's that's true. And that's true. I, I have a Tesla. So, you know, you know, and I have um, I have autopilot. All right. So, you know, with autopilot, it's scary. You know, especially like on some sharp turns, you know, um, that thing is, it's not, it's a computer. So, you know, um, me being driven, let's say in a fully autonomous vehicle, that's something that I'm not comfortable with. Right. And what you're saying is drivers have the ability to be aware of certain safety hazards through communication. I see that a lot with, 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 um, um, the autopilot feature, right? So, like if I'm driving, let's say, and it's an autopilot and it comes up on a turn, let's say like a sharp turn, it's not like the human. Like you're driving, you're coming up on a sharp turn, you see that turn, you're preparing for that turn, you're actually already turning into that turn a lot sooner than the computer. That computer turns like real precisely to the point where it's driving, the car is driving, it's driving, it's driving. You think it's going to drive into the wall or drive off the road, and then it just turns sharp. It does it real sharp precisely at the last minute because it's a computer. It doesn't have that human scare element there, you know, where you're turning earlier than the computer. The computer is turning at the perfect time, so it's very sharp and brisk and scary. So even with that, I, I absolutely know what you're talking about from a from a from a a, a, a real life scenario, I guess, uh perspective. Um even when like autopilot is in, let's say someone tries to cut you off, you can, as that human, you already see the driving pattern of the person in that right lane or that left lane. And you already prepared because you see them kind of veering over um, a little bit, but you're, you're on the defense already. The computer doesn't have that same human you know, feeling and that, you know, uh, until the car jumps over the lane, then it just stops. You know what I'm saying? So I hundred percent agree with you on that, but here's the flip side of that, right? If the government okays it, then it's going to be out there. You know, um, we do have the ability, uh, but man, in California, Waymo is already running fully autonomous ride share cars out there in California. They've been running it for a couple of years. So it already exists. It doesn't exist in every market, but Google has cars in California running fully autonomous, uh, uh, um, ride share Waymo. So it exists already. So I agree with you, but then again, I have to uh, disagree with you for that aspect because it already exists and it's only going to expand. But I agree with you hundred percent from, you know, knowing this, um, from, from real life scenarios that, you know, we do have the ability for certain safety hazards, uh, you know, through communication, eyesight, hand signals that the technology in the car doesn't have, but unfortunately the government has already approved it in, 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 in certain places. So. Yeah, I would invest in it. I would invest into the tech, the 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 actual business model. I think it's something that's probably going to get popular, um, whether it f succeeds or fails. Just the hype around it, you know. And then as it grows in popularity, is when I'll be exiting. It's definitely a short term play. Uh, definitely not a long term play. Yeah, 1K might be is the die. I'm trying to figure it out. One hundred is a dozen eggs these days. You saying why meaning why not? Like, man, just go ahead and spend the bread, or you saying, man, a hundred dollars is a lot. You can uh, 
I, I, I feel like, man, $139 to get access to more to choose from, I, I think it's worth it. You know, if you get a load that's paying, let's say you get three loads that week paying a thousand dollars a piece, right? And you got a dispatcher paying her ten percent to go on that same low board to find you those three loads. That's three hundred dollars you got to get a dispatcher. So why not pay the hundred dollars and get those three loads yourself? You know, and you only paying that hundred dollars once a month. So, you know what I'm saying? But what is the average cost of a box truck should be making a day in Atlanta? Looking to rent one in a few weeks. I can't answer that question. It depends on what it's doing. You know what I'm saying? It depends on what it's doing. Um, it all ultimately depends on what that truck is doing. What are you running? You know, there's plenty of different options of things you can do. So that 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 question is too broad to really give it a specific answer. Where do you see Tesla stock price going? I know you said own a Tesla. With UAE, Saudi investment, and Lucid, do you think they will be able to carve out a space in the EV market? I think Tesla has already carved out a space in the EV market. I think, however, um, they have a lot of work to do. Um, all the other manufacturers pretty much have already put out an EV model in some shape, form, or fashion, and they're, con they're continuous to pr produce new model um EVs um what you realize with Tesla now I think what people are realizing is that the technology they have is not really Tesla technology it's just EV technology you know what I'm saying like all these other companies have this same technology so it's not really that ground breaking I guess to say anymore um some of the the features you may think you're getting that are that are Tesla features or technology type features are just EV features like all EV cars have them so it's really not a, 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 a Tesla feature it's just an EV feature so I think the the buzz and the hype around a Tesla is slowly dying but they do have a place in the market because they were one of the early adopters um in their american they're an american company um but you know it's it's you know to me personally people ask me all the time like you know I mean, this is just another car to be honest with you once you get over the whole electric thing and the tesla thing then it's just it's just a car um, but I think they're going to have a place in the market because they're an early adopter and they're American made, you know, as long as they can continue to advance the technology, then they'll be fine. Um, yeah. Um, now lucid, I made a, a lot of money off lucid, um, um, before the merger, right. Um, before the SPAC, when it was CCIV, um, this is, goes back to what I'm talking about being an early adopter. In 2020, electric cars were going through their bubble phase, right? Um, I bought an CCIV, which we know is Lucid, at $18 and some change. All right, I sold at 60, and 60 um, was the top. You know, I learned from Workhorse that hey, whenever there's going to be a SPAC merger announced the next day, or it's possible SPAC merger. Smart money, we call it smart money, start exiting out. Oh, yeah, there's going to, they're going to announce a merger Monday, and it's going to go to 100. You know, I fell for that once or twice, then fall for it again. I got out. If it goes to 100, you know what? Okay, but guess what? I bought it at 18. I sold at 60. I still made money. All right, greedy pigs get led to the slaughter. All right, so, you know, I was able to pull out at the top. Um so I, I I can't say nothing bad about Lucid. I made a lot of money off of Lucid in 2020. So, um, yeah. What's a normal rate, in your opinion, for cargo insurance on personal vehicle 
Tahoe and for a cargo van doing big gig work. What's a normal rate, in my opinion, for cargo insurance? I, you know, I can't really answer that because um, my insurance has always been, um, you know, coupled together. So taking just the cargo aspect out of it, pricing it by itself, you know, I, I really can't, I don't know, I really can't do it. I got to look at uh, insurance to see what the itemized cost for just the cargo uh, w would be um, on a personal vehicle, Tahoe or for a cargo van. I, can you can you get cargo insurance for a Tahoe? I don't know if you can get it for a Tahoe. What are you, what are you looking to do to do gig work? If you're doing gig work, you don't need to get, None of that. You just need to have basic insurance, your basic insurance. If you're doing gig work, you don't need to get commercial cargo insurance, whatever you're running, whatever account you're running. Um, I believe, especially like Amazon, you have some type of cargo insurance they provide you with as part of the program. Um, so if you're doing gig work, I wouldn't invest in to cargo insurance. Um, I don't even know if you're going to be able to buy cargo insurance for a Tahoe, you know? So I, I don't, I don't, I don't think I can really answer that question because I've never been asked, can you buy cargo insurance for a personal car before? So I can't even, I'm not sure because I've never, I never bought it for a personal vehicle before. And I don't know if that's something you can even do. If you're doing gig, my opinion and my advice would just sign up for the gig and do the gig work and um, go from there. I think even if you were, you had the option to do it, if you wanted to do it, I think ultimately adding that expense on would ultimately be very detrimental to you doing the gig work. You know what I'm saying? I think that cost is going to, take your expenses so up that you'll probably be operating that actual particular gig at a loss maybe so what is the average profit a cargo van can make in a day in atlanta looking to rent all right so i'm not in atlanta but i can tell you what i've been able to do the average money for cargo vans for me running a cargo van account is about 50 to 100 dollars a day depending on the account you know, cargo van, you know, you're making a lot less money than a truck, right? So, you know, your your margin is going to be a little bit smaller, a little bit tighter. Uh, you're going to bring home or you're going to, that van is going to profit a lot less money. So um, an average cargo van, um, when I was running cargo van, cargo van accounts was making about 50 to 100 a day. All right, so... The best way to make money on a cargo van is at scale. Now, that that's me running at scale. Now, if it's you and your cargo van, and then it's different. Let's say you're, you're running, let's say, Staples or Office Depot. You're making $300, right? You'll see more than 50 bucks. You'll probably see, depending on if you're renting your van, you own your van, whatever your fixed costs, your variable costs are for the day. Let's say you average about $300 a day. You'll probably make somewhere around 100 to 150 bucks, you know, a day. And that's at 300 a day. You know, if you make it more, then obviously you'll make more. But let's say you make 300, you'll probably, you'll probably make about 100 to 150, more on the 100 side. And then you're going to supplement that by doing uh, gig stuff in the latter part of the day. All right. To kind of supplement that income. Now, there are some accounts you can make up to $2,000, $2,500 a week. You're going to have to run a little bit farther. So I know Spoke is paying $2,000 to $2,500 a week to do medical supply, but you're running 150 miles a day. So there's an option right there for you to make a little bit more money on a five-day work week. So you might want to look into them. I know they're down in Atlanta. And then if you're renting a cargo van, then you're really going to be, depending on the account you're running, that's really going to cut into your profit margin even more. Um, so just make sure when you go out to rent a cargo van, you really sign up with a company that's 
you're getting the best bang for your buck. Don't be renting a cargo van paying box truck prices. Don't be paying no five, six hundred, four, five hundred dollars a week for no cargo van. Do those curiosities require all various insurances as say as business LLC compared to 1099 curia apps? You talking about the gig apps? You can sign up for some of those apps as a as a business if you want, but um they're gonna give you a 1099 because you're an independent contractor. So yeah. You know, as far as the insurance is a concern, no, you're signing up um it's a gig, so you're not you're not you're not regulated under the FMCSA and the all the federal government, you know, where you need your authority and all that stuff. You're running gigs. So no, you don't have to have the one million in general liability, one million commercial car. Now it depends. Now if you're running mothership, something like that, then yes. But like your Amazon Flex, Curia app, your roadie, stuff like that, no. All right. So it depends on the app. Uh, I got three different quotes, 400 for home delivery, 600 warehouse to warehouse insurance. And one came monthly for, all right, this is what you need to do. Cause I've never heard of them charging you. Oh, if you 400 for home delivery, 600 warehouse, that's no, this is what you do. You go get you a broker, you tell them, look, I want to start a box truck business. Here's my LLC. Here's my SS4 form. Here's my articles of incorporation. I need insurance. I need $1 million in commercial cargo. I need $1 million in general liability. I need $100,000 in cargo. All right. And that's your starting point. From there, once you get that, you get your authority. You He files everything. He needs to file with the FMCSA. You get your authority. Then, well, prior to there, you need to decide where, wh how you're going to run, what lane you're going to run. Are you going to do Amazon? Are you going to run middle mile over the road? Um, are you going to do final mile? All right. Uh, and then from there, you start applying. Now, you already have the minimum requirement, which is your general liability, a million, your one million in um, um, commercial auto and your $100,000 in uh, commercial cargo. Now, when you're applying with different companies, different companies may require additional insurances they may require some umbrellas they re may require some uh, uh accidental occupational hazard insurance um and things like that um from there you would if you decide to go with one of those companies that ask for additional insurance then you would go back to your broker and say look here's the verbiage from this company they want to be added to the coi as additionally insured they also want to be added as a certificate holder and these are some more of the requirements. They want me to add accident occupational hazard insurance. They want me to add $100,000 worth of workers comp. And they want a $4 million umbrella. And then they're going to say, okay, it's going to be this much more. They're going to add it if you want to do it. And then you present this back to the company. Um, so this stuff right here, I, I don't know. You know, find you a broker. Tell them you need the minimum. $100 million in general liability, $1 million in commercial auto, $100,000 in cargo. Start there. Start applying, right? And then from there, go from there. Because a lot of companies, that may be all you need, all right? So find you a broker, man, and let them shop you on the market. Let them do the work for you. Because the way you're going about it, your verbiage is kind of off. I, I get where you're trying to get at now. Um so you need to get a broker, a commercial broker in your area that focuses on uh, commercial insurance and let them do it for you. All right. Find you a commercial insurance broker in your area and tell them you need you starting your business. You need one million dollars general liability, one million dollars in commercial auto and hundred thousand dollars in commercial cargo and start from there. Should newcomers be scared of going through with their business during the vetting process if they have enough capital to get started? I wouldn't be scared, you know. I mean, there's going to be some fear with starting a new business, fear of failing, fear of losing your money. But um, I think you should go through with it, you know. Um, just make sure you have a strong business plan. You've done a lot of research a lot of due, uh, due diligence and make sure you keep your costs down 
as low as possible. Enter into the industry with as low as of overhead as possible. Um, like I always reiterate, you know, the margin in this business are very, very low. Um, you know, they're very, very low. Very, 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 very low. You had a guy just ask me a few minutes ago about cargo van. You know, I was ranking 50 to to $100 a day running office depot with three cargo vans and I was running six trucks. Six trucks and three cargo vans and my cargo vans, I was making the least amount of money. But, you know, it still added up. It was 50 more per cargo van than what I had prior to those guys going out and doing that work for me. All right. So, you know, it um, it is what it is. This industry is very low margin. So make sure you have a solid plan coming in, a Trump type plan. And, you know, there's going to be that fear of starting a new business of and the fear of uncertainty of not knowing what to expect. But um, go through with it and just, you know, you know, give it your all, man. You know, if you fail, you know, just get up and try again. Except the next time, just, you know, learn from your mistakes and, and go even harder. If you got just enough capital where you don't have three to six months, let's say, of cash flow to float you through that learning curve, then, you know, you got a decision to make. Do you want to do you want to start your business with just enough money? And if you run into an unforeseen situation very early on and you know you're not going to have the money because you just got enough, then that's a decision that you got to take. And that's a risk that you got to take. Or you can hold off a little while while you save up more capital to make sure you have some working capital when you get into the business. Me, I would take the latter decision. I would wait a while, build up my money so that I have enough working capital, all right? Because you don't know what to expect. You can get into the business in the first week. You can have a breakdown. Anything could happen. You can have a claim, whatever, something, let's say. Your tire could blow out, whatever, you know, you need to have working capital, all right, um, for your business. If you don't have working capital, then I will hold off until you have enough working capital to float you through that learning curve at least three or six months. Not Tesla carving out his space, but Lucid carving out their space. I think Lucid doesn't have enough vehicles right now. The one vehicle they have is very expensive. They're starting with the high-end model like Tesla and like um um uh 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 um damn, what's the car that came out in 2012? They only made it one year. But you know, um these companies start out with their high-end luxury model. Uh now later on down the line, once Lucid creates an economy model and suv a crossover yeah you know nobody knows what the future holds but right now i think tesla got them tesla has them right now because they have a, a couple different products on the market um and then the product that lucid has it's a luxury model and everywhere i've seen it it's priced over sticker because there's not enough floating out there right and just everything is marked up right now so Tesla is actually lowering the price of their vehicles, you know, so I think Tesla has them right now. Don't know what the future holds, but as Lucid starts putting out different models, more models, then yes, yeah, a possibility that they could um, carve out their space in the market now as far as pushing them out. No, nah, I don't think that that'll happen, though. No. But can they become the American brand that becomes the first choice? Sure. Sure. I think it's very early on um, still that, you know, uh, you know, there's still a race to who will become the number one American made, you know, as far as being that Ford or that uh, that Chevy, um, you know, as far as the, uh, the, the, the electric industry is concerned. I think, you know, Tesla isn't stamped that yet. Lucid could. Could, could take that number one spot for him in the future, I believe. So, yeah, wholeheartedly. Chat GPT is coming to Bing, so it will finally have net access with up-to-date info. Chat GPT data currently only 
goes to 2021 with no real time net access net integration is going to be a game changer yeah i don't know if you came in but i, I think i spoke on that about 20 minutes ago about it coming to bing and um yeah i think it is a game changer by it coming to bing so google is trying to catch up um and yeah yeah it's a game changer buy a rumor sell the news exactly you said it's called spoke for the cargo van yeah spoke logistics it's a uh a, a, a medical supply logistics company so not specimen pharmaceuticals it's medical supply so wheelchairs canes crutches beds walkers things of that nature Have you ever had a contractor or employee that you didn't like? If so, how did you handle it? Yeah, a bunch of them. They didn't like me either. Um, nothing. I just, you know, I treated them fairly. I just didn't like them. They, a lot of them I didn't like because they didn't like me. And a lot of them just didn't like me because they wasn't me. You know what I'm saying? Um, I treated them fair uh, uh, to the most part. You know what I'm saying? I've had situations where, you know, it just ended, you know, you know, but um, I've never had to fight anybody physically, you know, had some shower matches, some cussing outs, you know, you fire people, you know. Um, but ultimately, I didn't, as a business person, I didn't let my feelings about this person because they had certain feelings about me get in the way of me making money. I know that my goal was just I, I'm, I need them to make money, right? Because if I if I feel a certain type of way, a type of person, you know, them making money for the company, which is also ultimately putting money in my pocket, weighs more than me not liking that person for whatever reason. So, man, I'm going to deal with that person because ultimately that body is putting money in my pocket. Um, when it gets to the point where it's just, you know, we can't work together and I got to get rid of you for whatever reason. You know what I'm saying? But ultimately, me not liking an employee for whatever reason, it just I it doesn't. I don't treat them any differently. I'm not gonna lower their morale to go out and do some goofball stuff, which is ultimately gonna cost me money. You know, I still treat them fairly like everybody else. I just didn't care for them for whatever reason, and um, I didn't let my feelings towards them. Uh, interrupt me making money off of them so you know um that's how i handle it and when you got to fire somebody you know you got to fire them not everybody gonna take it the same way you know the type of people that i've hired in the past you know that type of background felons street dudes you know this type of work you know moving you know final mile delivery you getting a certain type of person you know you're not getting no college graduate no nothing like that you're getting a person that got a certain type of you know thought process so you know so you know it, 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 you know you're trying to turn someone that's been in the street all their life into a, a, a an employee and trying to get them to maintain some type of professionalism is a is a task within itself so um just treating them the same way you treat everybody else fair and uh when it becomes unbearable then you gotta let them go do you think getting a cdlb maybe paired up with an endorsement will help a business get higher paying lows in a 26 for bacho versus uh, cdl 26 i think if you're gonna get a cdlb you might, might just get an a that way, if you do ultimately decide to transition to the semis later, you ain't got to go back. If you're in school to get it, just take care of it all while you're there. You know, just get it out the way. So that way later, you don't have to interrupt the transition to go back to go up a letter. You can just make a smooth transition. So just knock it out while you're in there. Uh, ultimately, yeah, you can make more money with a box truck having an A because now you can go buy a CDL box truck. Right. So you can pull heavier loads with that CDL box truck, ultimately, ultimately, ultimately making more money. So, yeah. Yeah. If you get the, the, the higher grade license, you're going to open you up to making more money. 
you know. If you were if you're running a box truck over ten thousand pounds for freight, you have to sign a carrier agreement with that. If you're running over ten thousand pounds for freight, the app one you should be running it with a CDL box truck, and two you should have a CDL. Because I don't know what the agreement you sign with that ain't going to stop that DOT officer, that state trooper from writing you a ticket and downing you. So. Brokers are the best way to go get insurance. I say so. You know what I'm saying? I say let the broker shop for you because they have access to a lot of insurance companies that you don't, you know. Progressive, yeah, you can sit down at your computer and go through that process on your own, but a lot of these other insurance companies, you can't. You can't do it with Grange. You can't do it with Mercury. You can't do it with Acuity. You have to go through a broker to sign up with these companies. And there's plenty of other companies out there that you probably don't even know exist that, you know, they know of that they can shop you to and ultimately get you a better rate than your household companies like Progressive and Byberk. Mm. I'm Mark, I'm grateful for you being on here allowing us to pick your brain. How often do you go live? Uh now just two nights. I was three nights. Um so Sunday at eight and Thursday at eight. This Sunday coming up is the Super Bowl, so I'm not gonna interrupt that for anybody. So I'm gonna come on this Sunday earlier in the afternoon, sometime between twelve and two. But every other Sunday, I'm on at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. And then t Thursday at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. I don't know if I'm going to bring Tuesdays back, guys. I think two nights is enough for right now. I started streaming three nights during peak season because everybody was banking on it. And I was telling people not to bank on it. So a lot of people were in limbo and they needed me for guidance. So I came on three nights a week to kind of give people some type of direction, but ultimately people, you know, a lot of people, you know, couldn't, couldn't hang in there. So for right now, Sundays at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time and Thursdays at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Appreciate you coming and checking me out though. Yeah, the Fisker, there you go. Karma Fisker, right? So when that boy came out in 2012, man, that boy was nasty. And then within a year or two, that thing was half the price, man. You could get one of them joints for thirty, forty thousand. That thing went from like a hundred forty thousand to fifty thousand in a matter of a year. But yeah, that boy nasty. Even today, that twenty twelve Fisker is nasty. A person who wouldn't even know what that car was could look at that car today. Being 11 years old and think that was a 2023. That car is nasty. I wouldn't buy one, though. I wouldn't buy one. I think that now that is being real early to the party where I'm not trusting that technology. And that car had a lot of issues. I know somebody had one. Them things was catching on fire left and right. Any cargo companies hiring right now, good pay. All of them. <laughs> They never stop hiring. No, no logistics company is ever at capacity. They always hire. So you pick one. I'll put everything up that they hire. Appreciate you for checking uh, out the live. Appreciate you for checking out the live. To hell with the Super Bowl. I'm trying to get my life to the Super Bowl level. I hear that. I hear that. I might check out the halftime show to check out Rihanna, but other than that, man, I ain't, I ain't fretting the Super Bowl, man. Uh, Mark, have you ever thought about doing an investment channel? Seems like you can share awesome knowledge on investing. Um, no. Um, I, if I do it, it'll just be on here. I'm kind of dibbling and dabbling in the different things on this channel, and also trying to keep the box truck, um thing going i know a lot of people have strayed away from box truck content but <clears throat> there's still a need for it um i know it doesn't have the popularity that it had you know last year year prior but you know there's still a lot to learn um 
so if I do continue to talk about investment and technology and try to kind of parallel that with, I'll try to parallel it with box trucking. Um, but yeah, I'm going to get more into investment stuff on this channel. Um, but I'm not going to change the channel, you know, I'll maybe incorporate it into the channel, you know. Karma Fisker has updated its lineup. Check it out. They are bouncing back. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, I know that they were, they've been working hard over the years. So yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check out the Fisker and see what they have to offer. Um, Y'all need to get on that food app for Super Bowl. I'm pretty sure they're going to be jumping. What food app are you talking about? Are you telling people to, for like food delivery for that day? Yeah, people do gig app stuff. Yeah, that'd probably be uh, like Uber Eats and stuff like that. Yeah, that will definitely probably be jumping that day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah, probably be jumping um, as far as money making opportunities. Yeah, any deliveries that day. Uh, grocery deliveries probably that morning. So Walmart, Spark. Amazon Relay, no, I mean Amazon Relay, Amazon Flex, uh, what are the other, Instacart, yeah, I think all of that stuff that day is going to be jumping, yep, 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 so that's one of them days where you can, you can cash out, you know what I'm saying, and make the most of it, so, yeah, take advantage of that, if you do that, definitely take advantage of that situation. Probably roadie too. Yeah, I haven't even looked at my roadie app in over a month. I'm going to rent from Enterprise. What do you think about them? And do you think a monthly quote of three thousand thirty-three a month and sixteen cent mile for a brand new twenty-six foot straight chuck is a decent deal? Three thousand thirty-three dollars a month. Sixteen cent a mile for a twenty-six foot box truck is good. Um. Three thousand thirty-three a month is under a thousand. Let me see what the exact number is. Divided by four, seven fifty-eight a month. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. It's about a hundred dollars a day, pretty much. A hundred and some change. So I think that's fair. Yeah, I would, I would, I would go for that. That's fair in today's economy. I would go for that. Yep, I would go for that. All right, guys, hit that like button if you haven't. If you got some type of value uh, from this live stream, I apologize about the first live, but stuff happens. If there's no more questions, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, you know, skedaddle, get on up out of here, and, uh, and I'll be back Sunday if there's no questions. If there are questions, then I'll hang out a little bit longer. If not, I'm going to get up out of here. All right, going once. Make sure you hit that like button. Sure, uh, go ahead with your question. Go ahead with your question, Saladin. Go ahead with your question. Uh. I'm going to give him a minute to type his question in. Does the owner operator need a medical card? And if so, how do you obtain it? Yeah, you need a medical card. The easiest way uh, you can get one, you can go to Concentra. Go to Concentra. Concentra. Yeah, who's ever going to be driving, they're going to need one. Some states, you may need a C-Class license, too. A non-CDL Class C. 
Uh, it's not a class C in every, I think like in some states it's like a class E or whatever, but you gotta check with your state regulations. Uh, but yeah, you can go to Concentra and get the medical card. Do you think SpaceX will go public anytime soon? If so, are you in? I don't know when it will go public, but if it does go public, I'm in. I'm not in immediately because you know IPO day it goes up and then the next day it goes down. So I'll wait a little bit, right? And then I will um, dollar cost average in. Um, and then obviously over time as they increase that 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 space technology um i'd be making money but i wouldn't invest i i don't i'm not privy to buy in pre-ipo now if i was if i could buy in pre-ipo then yeah but since i'm not able to um i would buy in after it, it ipos you know and settles at a price and then i'd aggressively start dollar cost averaging in Would you recommend a Twit card? Yeah, I would recommend one. Anything you can do to increase your uh, opportunities of making money, you know, increase your avenues, then yeah, why not? Yep, see, he says it's always good to have. Yeah, anything you can do to create, cre increase your avenues of making money, then yeah, go for it. Besides AI, anything else you recommend investing in uh, real estate uh, right now? It may be not the right time. I still think we're going to see a crash. I think we're going to see a global reset. Um, um, and then I would say buying the real estate. I don't think um, we're going to see rates that we saw back in 2010. Uh, but, you know. I say real estate is a good investment. Um, I like NFTs. Um, what else? Um, well, you said besides stock and crypto, so I can't say that. But stock and crypto, um, NFTs, uh, real estate. Um, I would say... Um, no, nah, you know I ain't gonna say that because I don't want you to go do it. I'm not too sure about that, but yeah. So, real estate, man, is is something I think you know you're gonna always make money in, and and it's gonna always go up. It's gonna always go up, always go up. Um, gold, you know, gold, investing in gold. Um, yeah. Now, if you're talking about now as far as stocks, I'm reinvest. I'm re-entering into the EV. I'm re-entering into electric charging. I'm going heavy in electric charging again. I'm going heavy in EV. The reason I'm going heavy in electric charging is because a lot of cities that network isn't really built out. Like here in my city, the network of charging is nowhere where it needs to be with the amount of Teslas um, and and Kias and whatever other electric vehicles running around. So there's still plenty of money to be made in electric charging. There's still plenty of money to be made in electric vehicles. And the reason why I say you got to remember Joe Biden's infrastructure bill, there is a segment of the infrastructure bill that by 2035, you know, um, manufacturers can't manufacture, uh, they can't sell any more gas combustible engine vehicles. Right, so we're gonna go through another EV bubble, right? As manufacturers reduce their, you know, gas combustible engine, um, and create more EV vehicles. So we're gonna go through that again. So I'm going to continue to buy into EV vehicle, um, EV stocks. I'm gonna continue to buy into um, EV charging. Um, I'm gonna buy into um, like government stuff, like Palantir, things like that. Um, I'm also going to buy into uh, robotics. 
um, to kind of parallel with uh, the AI. So I think if you're going to buy in the AI, you also need to buy in the robotics as well. Um, and those are right now what I'm heavily going to start. Well, I'm already doing EV and, and electric vehicle and AI, but I'm going to also start investing into uh, robotics and like government stuff like Palantir. Um, and then, uh, always continue to in, invest in your, like your common stuff, like your, your Amazon, your Microsoft, your Google stuff like that. That stuff automatically goes up over time. So, yeah. Do you know what GPS is the best for a 13 foot height clearance straight chuck? GPS? Man, I've always purchased Garmin's, you know, because my fleet, um, Fleetmatics allowed me to dispatch, you know, they were compatible with the Garmin that we could dispatch straight to the Garmin to uh, all my trucks and we could optimize the routes for them and send messages and communicate with them through the Garmin. So I would say Garmin because that's, that's, that's what I've always used because it it integrated with uh, Fleetmatic. It integrates with Fleetmatic, so that's what I I, I would recommend. Uh, found a cargo van for three fifty a week to rent. Still shopping around, but from your experience, do you think that would be fair? I think in today's times, three fifty for a cargo van is fair. Um, it's about a hundred dollars more than what. You know, in my heyday, a cargo van would rent for on a week. It would rent for about two twenty five, two fifty a week, ten cent a mile. So, you know, in today's time, three fifty is fair. It's about fifty dollars a day, fifty five dollars a day, something like that. Do you have a checklist for documents that need to be in your box truck? I do, but why don't you go use chat GPT and put that information in and see what it spits back out at you. Matter of fact, let's do it right now. We can do it together. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to do this real quick and then I'm going to get out of here. See some. Uh, where's my? Oh well, yeah, let me pull this up. Uh, let me. All right, so let's see. Please give me a checklist what was the question you got a checklist for documents that I need to keep in my box truck All right, so there you have it. The AI is giving you all the information you need. Let's see, it didn't say insurance yet. Hold on. Did it say insurance yet? Did I miss insurance? Yes, yeah, insurance. There you go. That's all the information. That's everything you need to keep in your box truck as far as documents. All right. Well, that's something you probably would have paid somebody a coaching session for. And you can just utilize this technology and get that information. For the free ski, for the free 99, all right? There you go for the free 99.
nine. All right. I hope you took a screenshot of that. If you don't, let me know. I'll pull it back up. I'm going to Man into Manhattan too soon. Some streets, there are commercial restrictions. I wonder where I can find info for that. I'm going into Manhattan too. Some streets, there are commercial restrictions. I wonder where I can find info for that. If you're talking about like weight restrictions for your box truck, there should be signs up. There should be signs. EV investment and charging network is a good idea. Uh, CHGP blink, yeah, charge point blink, electrify America, yeah. I was invested into um, charge point and blink and plug power before, so I'm slowly putting money back into those now. How do we send donations? Um... And you don't have to send me nothing, man. I'm good, you know. Just you being here and wanting to know I'm straight, man. You don't have to send me no donation, man. You know, it's all good. I appreciate it, though. If you want to sign up to be a member of the channel, you can join the membership on YouTube. But other than that, man, you don't got to send me nothing, man. I'm Gucci, man. I'm blessed, man. You know, I, you know it's all good, man. I'm here for y'all, man. You know, the channel... It cost me money to run the channel, but ultimately, you know, that's a write-off. You know, I write it off, you know. Uh, the money that, you know, YouTube pays doesn't, doesn't, it doesn't equate to the time that's spent to the money that I give away to the free mentorships that I do on Sunday, to the headsets I send out to people, all the other, you know, gifts that I send out or prizes and things of that nature, but, you know, I appreciate the, 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 the gesture, but, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to, I don't take donations on this channel, man, we, we Gucci over here, man, we blessed, man, but I appreciate it, though, uh, the future, great content, Mark, boss up with K, appreciate you, uh, Mark, what do you think about Workhorse and Lordstown Riders Investments, Workhorse, Hey man, you know I made money on Workhorse, but um I didn't make what I should have made. I think Workhorse was a bust. Um at th was it three dollars right now? I mean, I you know, I probably would never invest back in the workhorse. They didn't get that contract with the United States Postal Service. You know, I I I really struck out bad with Workhorse. Workhorse, you know, I can't say that Workhorse is the reason why I exited out of C C C C I V at sixty dollars. You know, because when Workhorse ran up to 40, I should have ran out and went back down. I held on and ran back up to 38. I didn't sell it in. I ultimately sold and made money, but I can't hold on to stuff stuff uh, with hopes of it, you know, doing something. You know, I can hold on to the, to the position, right? But if I get a run up and I'm 10 times and 20 times of my money, I got to exit some of that, and I didn't do that with Workhorse. Ultimately, like I said, I did make money, but I, I, Workhorse, is, to me, is a bust. They didn't get that United States Postal Service contract, so it ain't been right ever since. So I'm not sold on Workhorse. Um, Lordstown Motors, not too sold on them either. So I've never put money into Lordstown. Um, uh Neo um was always my 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 play as far as EV Neo. I really like Neo. I like I like the technology and I like the idea of battery swapping. Um battery swapping now if they can if they can ultimately uh um perfect, you know, battery swapping, that's a game changer, you know. Charging it's cool at a supercharging station. It's cool. But, like, man, that idle time just sitting there, especially in my market, you know, sitting ducks get plucked. You know, luckily for me, I could charge at the crib. But if I, is it something where I'm, I just got to stop and get a quick 15-minute charge for whatever reason? You know, that's sitting there, man. And, you know, 
you know, I'm not in a market where you can just sit in your car and watch YouTube while for 15 minutes while I charge. I, I got to be attentive at all times. Sitting ducks get plucked. But if, if, if like, for instance, if Neo can perfect that, that, that battery swapping where they just have swapping stations where the car can pull in and then the robotics are take that battery from under the car, uh, push it to the side, charge it, and put that new battery in there and close that trap door in three minutes and that car is gone, I would much rather do that than sit at a charging station all day long you know what i'm saying so i think neo um i think neo that that's always been my play i like the i like the concept of battery swapping over charging and that subscription whatever it is a hundred bucks a month eventually over time that subscription will continue to come down and uh yeah neo has always been my play i've never really cared for lordstown workhorse i'm just disgusted with workhorse chat gpt is free uh oh yeah i forgot about that pippy i forgot <laughs> see what i'm saying i don't even be knowing about this stuff i'll be knowing about it but i don't be thinking about that like right yeah you could hit that little dollar sign if you want people do that from time to time it's like a little dollar sign next to the chat box, but you don't have to if you don't want to either. You know what I'm saying? I forgot all about that, uh, Pippi. See me and me, I ain't. See, we 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 Gucci over here, man. We ain't like some of these other channels that be begging and stuff. You know, people be out here begging and stuff. You know what I'm saying? We ain't we don't do that over here. But you know, if it's, if it's something you want to do, then we appreciate it. But again, if you don't want to, you don't have to. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I know you're getting out of here. Yeah, in a minute. Uh, RG Flicks, what up, though? What up, though? What up, though? How can you use Chat GPT for market research? Just put it in. What do you want to research on and what market? All right, let's see. I did a market analysis already for, uh, for uh box truck business. You probably missed that that part earlier. You probably weren't in here. Uh let's see. Let me do it real quick. One more game real quick, man. Let me see something. I think I did it earlier. I did a market analysis. Hold on. Uh let's see some. Can you do market research analysis for a box truck business? Let's see some. All right, hold on. Let me refresh this. Research analysis for a box truck business. Let's see ya. All right, boom. There you go, your market research analysis for a box truck business. Market research is a critical aspect of restarting and running a successful box truck business. It involves gathering and analyzing data about the market, competitors, and target customers to inform business decisions and strategy. Here are some steps. Well, here are some steps to conduct market research for a box truck, box truck business. So it's going to give you an outline. Hold on. Let me see if we can input that. So here are some steps to conduct market research for a box truck business. All right, it's going to give us the steps, and then I'm going to go in individually and put each step in and see if they give us information on each step. Hold on, let's see. Let's see what happened. Hit that like button too, guys. That like button. All right, now let's see. Let's go back up. So here are some steps to conduct market research for a box truck business. Define your market. Determine the ge geographic area you will serve and the types of customers you will target small business. Okay, so we probably wouldn't be able to get the answer for that. 
Uh, assess demand, research the demand for box truck service in your target market. Let's see something. What is the demand for box truck services? Uh, let's see, in Chicago. Let's see, it probably won't give us this information. It's too, too specific. Uh, the demand for box truck services in Chicago would depend on various factors such as the current state of the local economy, population growth, the number of businesses operating the area, the level of competition in the market. To get more accurate assessment for the demand of box truck services in Chicago, uh, you got a super chat for Trey Hicks. Trey Hicks, appreciate it. Trey Hicks, appreciate the super chat. So basically right here, here's the demand for the box truck services. So then what I would do is to get more accurate assessment of the demand for box truck service in Chicago, I would recommend conducting primary research through surveys and customer interviews as well as secondary research as government data industry reports. So basically starting out with these top factors, local economy, I would put in, uh, let's see, what is the current... What is the current population growth of Chicago? Let's see. I would start inputting that information that it gives me and then going back and re like re inputting that information to see if I can get answers. All right, so the population growth it's gonna give me as a 2021 estimated population in Chicago was 2.7 million people, which represents a slight decline from the previous decade, however, is important. All right, so you know we're dealing with 2.7. It's probably a little bit more or less because this is information from 2021. Uh, then we would get the number of businesses operating in the area. All right, what are the amount, uh, amount, of businesses operating in Chicago. The exact number of businesses operating in Chicago is it can change frequently. However, according to the data from the U.S. Census, and this is the information you would get from the census, right? Because there's businesses that are opening up and businesses that are closing every day. So, for certain information like that's broad, that changes often, you would just go off the last census, all right? So the last census, there was 168,000 firms, and that's the information you would put into your um, uh, into your market research analysis, all right? So, you know, you guys get the gist of it and how to utilize it. In certain aspects, it's going to give you some information. It's not going to give you all information. You just have to utilize the technology to help aid and assist to make your life easier. All right. You got the best info, man. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I have a Neo position. I'm feeling BYD as well. Cool, man. I believe in Neo wholeheartedly. I don't think you can go wrong with Neo. Uh, is there any way we can turn our fuel cost from a variable cost to a fixed cost based on the gallons of our chuck fuel tanks can hold? No. Your variable cost is variable cost for a reason. It's because it's going to fluctuate from week to week. You know, you, 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 I don't know what lane you run, but if you run middle mile, for instance, you're not going to go the same place you went this week that you went last week. And guess what? Even if you do go the same place, fuel may be more this week than it was last week, you know? So it's going to fluctuate, you know, fuel, um, is just something that I just don't, it won't ever be a fixed cost. It's going to, it's something that's going to always fluctuate. So it's going to be a variable cost. That's why it's a variable cost because it fluctuates. Um, started listening to you last month. A few videos every day got me feeling like I've been in the game for a few years now. And hey, man, I appreciate that, man. I'm glad you uh find value in the content, man. 
And once again, thank you for the super chat. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. One dollar for the jukebox, the other dollar on the bus fare. Hey, man, you know, it all add up, man. Just get reinvested back in and gets paid for it. You know what I mean? That's all it does. It just gets paid for it. Uh, thank you for coming in. Thank you for coming in. Definitely good for reassurance and our ideas. Yeah. All right, hit that like button, guys. If it ain't no more questions, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to start working on Sunday's show. I don't know what I'm going to talk about Sunday, but I'm going to talk about something. Uh, so I'll figure that out between now and Sunday, and then I'll put it together for you. Uh, so if it ain't no more questions, I'm going to go ahead and skedaddle and um, get me something to eat, man, and uh, take my behind to bed. I got an early day, man. Make sure you guys hit that like button. Um, I've been talking to a lot of logistics companies lately. You know, they've been hitting your boy up. Um, so... I'm going to be able to help people a little bit more when you guys have questions about certain logistics companies. A couple of them are looking to do something with me. Um, so I do have connects on certain logistics companies, not all of them. I'm not going to go into details which ones they are, um, but at a later date, I will put something together and you know, maybe have some of them come on and um, talk to you guys. Some of them are willing to come on and give you a better scope of the logistics company and what um, their company, what it entails to run for their company. So, man, you know, we, we, we working over here. We're going to try to, you know, bring you the best information um, possible uh as always so you know it is what it is guys i appreciate everybody for checking out if you haven't hit that like button hit that like button i'm on every sunday and thursday at 8 p.m this sunday i will be on earlier due to the super bowl because i'm not trying to compete so i'll be on sometime between 12 and 2 just keep you know stay up to date with the channel i'll post it and then i'll put it in the community and you'll see turn make sure you turn your um post notifications on so that when I do go live, you'll get the notification to your phone and uh, you can check check it out. Uh, D. Willie, appreciates you always. Great content. Blessings. Appreciate you guys. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get out. I will see you guys uh, Sunday. Peace.